Kay, I'd like to show you some of the new data engineering tools that are available in ArcGIS Pro. Um, I'll include some of these links um, in the video page in YouTube. So uh, data engineering uh, is this whole suite of tools that you can use to clean and format your data and prepare it basically for spatial analysis, but it allows you to visualize patterns, um, look for relationships and, and look at the structure of the data uh, using kind of quick draw visualization techniques, um, including symbology, creating charts, um, and to calculate some of the basic statistics, actually um, relatively complex statistics, um, on the fly. There are some really helpful uh, descriptive web pages. Like I said, I'll include those links. Um, but let's look at some data in Pro. And if you want to follow along, um, this is a, a national risk index that's been calculated for uh, the United States. Um, I downloaded it from ArcGIS Online. Uh, by searching NRI underscore counties, um, if you want to follow along. It's, it's pretty uh, detailed data. Let me uh, do a select by attribute here to show you what some of the fields are. So we've got population, um, but then there's a composite national risk index score and a rating um, with some uh, percentiles calculated. Um, expected annual losses, uh, social vulnerabilities, community resilience scores, uh, and then they break it down by the different risk types. So for example, I'm looking for kind of a shorter one here. Here's drought. So um, number of events over time, uh, annualized frequency, um, effects on agriculture, agricultural loss, some of them have building loss, but then at the end there's the um, overall risk calculation and then uh, the rating is a categorical or a text field similar to this, very low to very high. Uh, earthquakes, hail, heat waves, wildfires, winter weather, uh, really interesting data set, very rich. Okay, so let's take a look at data engineering tools with this selected in contents. Go to the data tab and it's over here under data engineering. It opens up a panel for us basically. Um, so some of the first things that you can do are notice the field list and notice that the icon tells you what type of data it is. So we've got ABC for text data, uh, 123 for integer data, um, long, short, etc. And then we've got um, 0 0.01 and an arrow showing this is continuous data um, but with a floating point, so either double or float. And then over here you can see you can update the symbology, create charts, or go to the attribute table. Um, and this is for, these are the different field names. So if you scroll through here, you'll see that these are the social vulnerability, community resilience. These are all the different field names that I was just showing you. So those are all here, and we can do things like update this on the fly to look at different symbology. So for example, let's look at riverine and flooding. I haven't done this. We can um, click on the numeric index or the category and just update the symbology. Because it's categorical, it's um, assigning these values um, randomly. And so this isn't a very effective way to look at it. So instead, let's look at the numeric values. So that's not what I expected to see. Um, I was expecting to see more along the Mississippi River. But I think it depends on, you know, how they're constructing this index it has to do with expected losses. It could be agricultural, it could be buildings. Um, and there must be something in here that's that's flooding. Let's take a look at something else like maybe wildfire. update the symbology. Oh, that part of the country has got some risks <laughs> going on, which reflects what we saw in the overall composite risk. Being able to update the symbology quickly allows us to see the differences in spatial distributions uh, between the different values. So let's now um, look at how we can quick make some charts from the data and that's going to help us reveal patterns and see trends and relationships and the structure of the data 
um, not spatially, but just how the distributions vary. Okay, so let's take a look at the social vulnerability score. If we hit the create chart button, it creates a histogram. So numeric values are going to create a histogram. And this shows us the distribution of the variables values. Um, it groups them and gives us a count or frequency um, of the values in each group. This is the social vulnerability, shows a pretty normal distribution. To make another chart, we go back to um, our original tab. Let's create a chart using the text data, maybe cold wave. The risk index rating, remember, is the you know moderately, uh, relatively moderately, very high, very low. Um, so another thing that's helpful to know is that we can reorganize these. Um, with data visualization, um, oftentimes you want to rank your bar charts from high to low, and you can do that um, in the properties. The properties for the tables or the charts are here, opens a panel for us, and in this first section under data, we can sort by y-axis, but uh, you want to be aware that because these do have an order to them, that maybe doesn't make sense. Um, so we can custom sort it. But first, before we do that, um, it's much easier to read the longer titles here if we switch or rotate our axes. And you can do that um, right here. They give you the option to rotate. So technically, it would be easier for us to read these if they weren't being um, shortened here. Um, so relatively low, relatively moderate, relatively high. We want very low to be at the top. So we can change that over here by just dragging and dropping, put the no rating at the bottom. So very low, relatively low, relatively moderate, relatively high, very high, and then no rating. And we could probably get rid of this one. One thing that's pretty neat about this though is that the chart and the map are connected to each other. So if we wanted to know where the very high were, now we haven't symbolized the map um, by cold wave, um, we're only looking at the chart. This is still wildfire. But if we select the very high um, cold wave hazard rating, uh, it selects those counties on our map. The very low cold wave. The third type of chart that you can make is a line chart. So if you have um, temporal data, or a dates column, and want to see trends over time, um, you can go back to um, you can go back to your um, fields view and select um, some kind of a date or time field and then see a line chart. So the next thing that you can do quickly with the data engineering tool is calculate statistics. So I'm going to pull just a couple of these fields over into our main panel here. This is the number of tornado events. I'm just going to pick some random things. Um, Let's look at the numeric for uh, the tsunami numeric value. And we're going to build kind of a secondary table here. here. Um, if you hit the calculate button, calculation, I'm just going to resize these here so we have a little more room. So you get um, a little spark line showing the distribution of the values, how many nulls there are, field type, and then min, max, mean, standard deviation, median, count, the number of unique values, outliers, the sum, range, interquartiles, first, third. This is amazing, right? I mean, this is an instant calculation of the summary statistics for any one of the fields. You can create a whole new table over here and get this instant calculation of summary statistics. Another good thing to know is that if you have a sub-selection, uh, you can recalculate the statistics and it will calculate, um, recalculate all these summary stats just for the selected features. 
So that's a really nice shortcut. Uh, finally, just um, know that um, the data engineering, we've talked about how to open it, exploring the fields, um, dealing with the statistics. Preparing your data is a pretty interesting um, subset of tools that allow you to clean the data. So removing unnecessary fields, or if you're displaying XY data, maybe you have zero values for latitude or longitude or something. Um, it allows you to also fill um, missing values, and I'll talk about that in a second. Constructing has to do with um, adding new fields. These are some of the things we do in attribute tables already. Um, calculating geometry, um, doing field calculations. Integrating is joining in other data. And then formatting, you can uh, change field types. Sometimes a field might come in as text, but it is numeric, and you can just um, reassign it a numeric designation. Uh, the so here's the, um, kind of the details about cleaning and constructing. But it's, I think it's pretty interesting, and I don't know that this is a great idea, but you can replace missing or null values by, sorry, by estimating values um, using some kind of interpolation, um, spatial neighbors, space-time neighbors, time series. Um, that I don't know that that's, I guess I'd need to know the details to know whether or not that's a good practice, but it's pretty cool that you can do it. Um, time series smoothing as well is a pretty interesting idea um, to um, kind of diminish short-term fluctuations that might impact longer-term trends. You can smooth um, values over time. And then, like I said, integrating has a lot to do with joining. So uh, these are great web pages that, that describe um, some of the functionality of data engineering.